Hello, it's Jeannie. How are you? You know, I was thinking about this and saying hello to you is the favorite part of every video I make. I truly mean that and I hope you are well. I'm really honored that today's video is sponsored by a longtime supporter, Zamat Pillow. And talk about getting the latest and greatest. Oh, let me show you something. You guys have told me you love this pillow. You've ordered them, you've tried them, and I really, I love your feedback as I'm sure the company does, but let me show you the latest, greatest. It's the Blue Dot Pillow. This is a sleep changer. Let me tell you more about it. This ergonomically designed blue dot pillow is comfortable and supportive and it stretches your neck with this design and helps lessen cervical tension. This luxurious bamboo fiber pillowcase is a three-layer structure made of natural bamboo fibers on the surface nestled with striped polyester fiber and a durable polyester fabric at the bottom. And this blend ensures breathability and envelops you in blissful comfort. Inside, is the fourth generation memory foam core and it has an impressive 95% breathability rate. And it's adjustable anywhere from four, just about four and a quarter inches up to five and three quarter inches. The best thing about this pillow for me is that it's great for back sleeping, or side sleeping, and even stomach sleeping, although I typically sleep on my side. Use my code GENIE15 to get a great discount on this pillow, and let me know what you think. I'm in love with it. I'm absolutely in love with this pillow. For a great night's sleep, the blue dot so Zamat Sleep Pillow is just tops. Thank you, Zamat Sleep, for supporting my channel and sponsoring this video and providing us with these awesome, awesome pillows for a great night's sleep. So today, I have a super cool walkthrough from a Seventeen magazine from October of 1976. I have not even opened this yet. It's still in the packaging it came to me in. I think I got it off eBay. And like I said, these things, if you have them, hang on to them or sell them because they're not cheap. To make some money. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. It came double wrapped. So we can walk through with some extra crinkles. I love that. Let me open this. Okay. Here it is. And the cool thing about this is it's 
Dorothy Hamill. I was a huge Dorothy Hamill fan, and she was an ice skier. So, um, she was just amazing to watch. And she had the Dorothy Hamill haircut that all the girls were trying to be like in their mid-teens, you know, that haircut. It was a just kind of a short bob, but then kind of swept back. Let me show you. So, I want to walk through this magazine with you and point a couple things out as usual. This is the beauty special. How to look very, very pretty. <laughs> Three top models in their careers. Getting and keeping a job. Why mother's a problem. Why your mother is a problem. Ooh, John Travolta having fun as Barbarino. Uh, do you guys remember John Travolta in his, I think it was his breakout, you know, um, hit on TV. Vinnie Barbarino. And then super skater Dorothy Hamill. Her beauty, diet, and exercise routines. So we're going to look at this. Now, the first thing I want to say about this, and I think it's all magazines like this should almost come with a warning to particularly young girls. Pictures are photoshopped. Bodies are made to look slimmer. Um, lighting is made to make faces look better. And let's make sure the expectation is one based in reality, not fantasy. Now, we didn't have internet, you know, in my day. All we had were these magazines. And this is what we, you know, lived by in terms of our beauty tips and our ideals and our body images. And I just want you to remember, on social media, in magazines, this is not reality. Not a hundred percent. It's doctored. It's doctored to look better. I have two lights here that do wonders for my my face on camera. Okay? It these lights blur out some of my wrinkles my dark circles and I have one I have one dark circle that's bigger and stronger and deeper than the other side of my face this one on my right I actually wear more makeup under this eye than this eye and I'm just saying that because even you know this YouTube video isn't a hundred percent natural and real I've got two big artificial lights that do me a lot of favors like I've said before, I wish I could just carry them around. You know, hey, everybody, this is really what I look like. No. So, I just want you to keep that in mind. You know, don't compare yourself to anything online, anything in a magazine. You know, you be you. You be authentic. And just know that everything online, just about everything, is made to look better than it really is. So, okay. So, we're going to get started on this. And let's go back to 1976 and walk through this Seventeen magazine together. Here is our Seventeen Magazine Beauty Special, and I have not looked through this yet. I probably did back in October of 1976, but not recently. 
So let's get going. This look was very popular then, first of all, lots of makeup, but this kind of bandana low over the eyebrow like that, and these colors, the kind of a coffee, burnt cinnamon, burnt brick, ah, gingerbread reds, Max Factor. And you see the very thin eyebrows? More thin eyebrows. <laughs> and of course, oh, you know, Johnson's baby shampoo. I used to really love this and I loved the scent, but I found it really stripped my hair. But it was really nice because it didn't make your, you know, eyes sting. And anyway, I loved it. So shiny and lively one day, dull and limp the next. But baby shampoo makes my hair pretty every day. Charlie. Now, I remember Charlie the perfume, but I don't remember Charlie the makeup. I just don't remember it. Hmm, interesting. This bowl cut was very popular. I never had that bowl cut. I, I don't think I could have worn it very well. Now, this cut is similar to the Dorothy Hamill, that short bob, but then swept back. So, ah, but what was popular was that frosted tip. And it was a do at home, you know, highlighting thing. And I, oh gosh, I totally this did this. I had, you know, darkish blonde hair. What do they call that? Dishwater blonde. <laughs> and, um, but everybody touched this up. And I've told this story before that one time I was doing it and some Jehovah's Witnesses came to the door and these two ladies, we really liked them. They were very nice. They came by on a monthly basis and we would stand there and chat. My mom would. And anyway, one time they came and nobody was home. So I answered the door because it was rude not to. And I had a bunch here and then also above my ear and I had long hair. So I had it like this and then all along my ear. And they stood and talked and talked and talked and it went like 40 minutes beyond my processing time and it turned white. <laughs> oh my goodness. Bonnie Bell. Now this is a classic then and today. Chanel number five. And this was actually pre-World War II or right around World War II when this came out, Coco Chanel. There's something very classic about that scent. And I have to tell you, sometimes I really like it and sometimes I'm off, off it, you know? Sweet Earth Suds. I can still smell this today. All those herbal essence type smells. Very popular in the 70s. Very, those earthy smells. Baby powder. Oh, Johnson's baby powder. When, when a woman wants to make a gentle impression. Ah. Oh. The guy playing the guitar just shows up. <laughs> okay, Revlon. Different Revlon skincare products. Huh, interesting. A wallet, a clutch, you know, a love, second rate leather won't do in a clutch. You don't really see 
pads for wallets anymore. Oh my goodness. Okay. So. Contact lenses um, really started becoming popular. You know, and I'm thinking about getting contact lenses again, or maybe the one, that mono lens, so I can see near and far, or I don't know. I'm going to talk to my eye doctor about that. Does anyone have scent memories of Emeraude? Emeraude by Cody. That was popular. Almost every one of my girlfriends had this in the 70s. Okay, so here's an ad with Dorothy Hamill, and this is what her hair used to do when she would do her spins. Um, ice skating, that, that cool whip. And so she got that, so she used to advertise for that short and sassy shampoo by Clairol. Oh my goodness, Tanya Tucker and her new album. Wow, look how young she was. All day makeup for oily skin. Noxema. I, I love the scent of Noxema. I still do. That actually, we'd put that on sunburns and it would actually sting to high heaven. Okay, how to do your makeup. I'm gonna do my makeup like this one day. <laughs> that heavy, heavy blue. And the lips, lots of big, glossy. Roll-on or solid antiperspirants. Interesting, this is all just drawing, no model needed. You know, somebody just drew a very simple drawing. Hmm. An ad for a matter of time. Um, with Liza Minnelli and Ingrid Bergman. Wow. Now, heat protective conditioners for the hair because hot rollers, oh my God, these things were awful, awful. They hurt so much, but you know, blow drying, curling irons, hot curlers, things like that. They didn't have flat irons, but um, so they started realizing that you needed heat, you know, protection. They used to advertise sewing so much more back in the 70s. A lot of people I know made their clothes. We just did. My mom made our clothes growing up for me, not my brothers. Um, you know, a lot of moms did that. And then in, you know, like sixth and seventh grade, you took sewing class or home ec and you learned how to sew and you made your clothes. Wow, look at those. X Factor Mascara. Famolares. Oh my gosh, I remember wearing Famolares. Wow, look at um, Christy Brinkley. Wow, she looks like she could be a teenager. And there's 99.999% 99 .9 sure that's her. But there's no name on it that says that. Now, this is the Instamatic that, oh my goodness, the trim light Instamatic that everybody had. Loved this. Easy pop-in film. Head and shoulders. Oh, God, that stuff stunk. 
Okay. Why mothers a problem. Does it sometimes seem that no matter how hard you try, you just can't get along with your mother? Maybe she's middle-aged and, you reason, can't possibly understand your problems. After all, you're going through a difficult time of life, full of frustrations, confusion, and self-doubt. You're bothered with questions like, who am I? What will I do with the rest of my life? But so is she. In fact, you and your mother may have more in common than you think. I like that. Okay, my <laughs> here's some advice, questions and advice. My mother tries to look and act like a kid, but she's almost 42. When I have friends over, she tries to join in our conversation. It's so embarrassing. Oh my gosh. That I remember feeling that and then also getting this from my own kids. So This is a stupid answer, I think. Most adults have an image of themselves as still being in their prime. When a daughter begins to blossom into the young woman, her mother imagines herself to be. The mother often feels threatened. She might respond by competing with her daughter on things like fashion, friends, and even boys, trying to relive her youth through her daughter not an answer to give her. Okay, what would I have answered? I would have said she's just trying to be relatable and have fun with you and your friends and, you know, connect with you guys. That's all. God. Help, I'm being smothered. My mother wants to choose my friends, clothes, the movies I see, even my boyfriend. Oh my God, these answers. According to this person, a middle-aged woman is often unprepared for the second half of her life. She is full of energy, but if she can't find a constructive outlet for that, she may use it to cling to her children. Yeah, okay. Anyway. Little, little articles, polishing your language, taking care of your feet. Don't dash to sign on the bottom line. Hmm. Don't sign something without understanding the terms. So this is October, so that's why they've got ghoulish things. Okay, Farmer Browns. Hello, fresh face. Dig those Farmer Browns. So, country fresh frosted lip colors. Mm, those are pretty colors. Those are really pretty colors. I love those. That's my, my favorite. Pimple <laughs> medication. Some more frosting boxes of you know, do at home hair painting kits. This, this was the 70s. These platform shoes, oh my gosh. This whole look, this whole look. I remember once I had a pair of bell bottom pants like this and I wore a pair of um, platform, wooden platform shoes. They were pretty high. And I tripped at school going down some stairs and I fell. I mean, splat. I was so embarrassed. I thought I was going to die. I wish I did die at that moment. <laughs> so. I remember these um, frosty blue, frosty green colors. And that you paint them on with a wand. Carefree 
panty shield. <laughs> Breezy by Windsong. I remember that too. I had some double mint, uh, Wrigley's double mint gum the other day, ah, last week sometime, and I loved, it was a taste memory, but it didn't last. The flavor went away in like five minutes. I really liked that flavor too. Okay, Wella Purple Blossoms Shampoo. Clearasil, because remember, this is a 17 magazine, so, you know, uh, pimples and acne and skin issues were a big deal. More frosting kits. More patterns to sew from McCall's. The big ones were Simplicity, McCall's, Butterick, and um, I think that was really it. Vogue, I think, came out a little bit later and some other ones, but Simplicity, McCall's, and Butterick were the, the three big ones. I saw these on eBay, and they are a fortune. Holy moly. I'd love to get them, but I won't pay that money. Ah, Cosmetique. This was like one of the first beauty boxes, and I was a member of this. And you got all kinds of little, you know, perfumes and makeup products every month. I loved, loved, loved that. This bedroom is very reminiscent of the 70s. Um, I did not have a canopy bed, always wanted one, but did not have one. More soap for pimples, blackheads, oily skin, and acne. Yeah. See, here's Simplicity, sewing by Simplicity. This model was very, very big in the 70s on all the teen and, you know, young women magazines. I don't remember her name, but... White Shoulders, oh my goodness. That was another very popular perfume. Arm in Arm by Helene Curtis. Keeps you fresh and odor free. And then, of course, <laughs> the wedding sets. Because at 17, you should start thinking about getting married, <laughs> right? Gee, your hair smells terrific. I did love that shampoo. furniture, the hope chests. I never had one. Um, I know girls who did, you know, friends who did have them, and they would start filling them with china and heirloom things and whatnot. Look, Ma, I'm a sex pot. Lip gloss. Lip gloss. Movies of the month. Sybil Shepherd was um, kind of a cool gal in the 70s that we all kind of looked up to as well. Sewing machines. And more. <laughs> Five dollars for two fluid ounces.
Fabergé makeup. Chrissy Everett, she was great. Um, she was a tennis player and just very relatable. Um, and so they could put her face in, on anything, teen, and we girls loved it. She was, she was great. She was an awesome tennis player. Makeup. See, look at this. Advertising zippers. Zippers for sewing. I wish they'd bring that back for girls and boys. I mean, there are some amazing designers out there. It doesn't matter, um, girl or boy, man or woman, you know. Sewing should be brought back, in my opinion. Okay, so now... Just a lot of ass. Ooh, I had a pair of boots like these. Oh my goodness, I wish I still had them. Why did I get rid of them? And I got them at Leeds. Avon, sweet honesty. That was a nice scent. Okay, oh, caramels. Oh, I love caramels. So this is for craft. A brother's sewing machine. The other one was an Elna, and here's a brother. Boy, look at that makeup. Frosty and blue. Very 70s, actually, and 80s. Some, I, you know, I tried everything. I tried everything out there. <laughs> Eight track tapes. Okay. Eleven tapes or records for a dollar. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I belong to this club. The Columbia House Record Club. Okay, here we go. How to look very pretty. An autumn beauty guide. Okay. I like that they haven't, you know, tried to hide all her freckles. So, this is basically about, okay, taking care of your skin, um, Hmm. Being outdoorsy, but too much sun and spray can do more harm than good. Um, uh, okay, how to take care of your hair, how to transition from day to night, okay. Golden Girl. Okay, not much brightness out there as winter approaches. What is a blonde or light brunette to do? She'll add her own sunshine by painting on subtle flickering hair lights with a brush. And so the medium is quiet touch. Um, so again, painting on those highlights. So they're showing a couple of different guys. So we've got a redhead and, you know, um, this is their, I think their version of uh, diversity. Here's another blonde haired, blue eyed. Here's more blonde haired, blue eyed. Okay. And again, like their version of diversity. Now she, it's country, you know. Town and country, so it's all about how to look good 
in the country. All right. Okay. There's not one. And this is just my criticism from today's viewpoint looking back. There's no one with any darker skin color than this country gal with a blurred rougey or that redhead. So I do like that about today's magazines. You see a, a wide variety of ethnicities and colors and, you know, hair types and whatnot. This is all one. All one. Okay. I want to be a model. I think in the 70s that was everyone wanted to be model or model-like. Um, so, what do we need to do to become a model? They're really just talking about her clothing here. Um, and her first break was a Western telephone ad and then cosmetic ads. Um, okay, her biggest problem as a model is keeping her weight down. I'm a terrible foodaholic. When I started working, I was constantly eating but never thinking about calories. Then one day, Eileen Ford told me that I'd better start losing weight before I lose clients. She was reformed. Now she stri sticks to a strict, low-calorie diet, eats three meals a day, and has cut out snacking. I still have to lose five pounds, so I exercise in the morning and at night and never ride where I can walk. Hmm. I wonder what her weight is. Okay. Yay. Diversity. Okay. Tukey Smith. I remember her. She's 24. She's 5 foot 7, 113 pounds, and it gives her um, her bust, waist, and hip size. And, but you know what? I'll tell you. She looks like she's a gymnast or something because she looks healthy. She doesn't look too skinny. She began her career as a showroom model for her brother, designer Willie Smith. That's him. And then she um, hit the runway after that. Good. Okay, Sherry McCoy. She's 17, 5 foot 7, 114 pounds. Wow. That's, st I still, let's see, 5 foot 7. She's 5 foot 7, 113. Wow. She looks healthy. You know, she looks healthy, but I still think 113, 114. I think it's a little on the thin side, personally, personally. So these are how these girls broke into modeling. Here we go, Dorothy Hamill, the girl who loves to skate. It talks all about her. It doesn't give her size and weight, which I think is good. Shows her eating a great big meal, good. Uh, she still has to watch her weight. Sweets are my weakness, but I know how to cut down when I have to. I love cottage cheese, and I drink a quart of mineral water a day. Mm. Taking care of her famous hair. See, this is what we would pour over if, if this is, you know, what the kind of hairstyle we had. She uses short and sassy, and that's the one she is, you know, she endorses. Her makeup routine. Okay. Hmm. Not a whole lot about her. How to get and keep jobs. 
That could be relevant today. Oh, John Travolta, look how cute he was. Welcome back, Cotter. Vinnie Bob, Vinnie Barbarino, Vinnie Barbarino. Oh, good awareness. Teen, how to prevent teen suicide. Where to get help, that's nice to see. I don't remember anybody talking about this. Lumber party ideas. <laughs> Underwear. Cute. Very cute. getting into fashion sweaters. These are cute. I would wear these even today. Those are cute sweaters. Oh, I love that. I would wear that. Not that. Yes, that. Not that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that is so cute. I'd wear that. Okay, first date. It's a story. It's a fiction story. Okay, Sewing Up Snow Country. Here's an article. Or, yeah, what to make. Making your own ski outfit. Is really cool. Add a, you know, you can make these and then add a bright sweater. That is great. I love that. Get out of the meat and potato rut with tasty vegetarian treats. No meat surprises. Okay. look good. These all look really good. Where to get protein. Oh, more on contact lenses. A diamond is forever. Oh. Zsa, Zsa Gabor beauty products. Does anybody remember Zsa, Zsa Gabor? Darling. I had one of these. Which one did I have? I think I had the love. I really do think I had that. Skin conditioner, save face. And then in the back, things you could send away for. This was big. Going steady, girls. Um, getting a boy's um, ring. His, you know, his, um, what do you call that? His school ring. I had one once. And what we used to do is we would take string and clear nail polish and you wrap the string. Wrap, 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 wrap. And then you put a layer of thick um, nail polish, clear nail polish on it, let it dry, then you wrap more and more string around it, wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, put more nail polish on it, and then another layer until you build it up until it fit your finger. <laughs> Okay. 
just stuffed by. Stuff, 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 just like today's magazines. I'm surprised we're not getting into the, you know, losing weight, you know, lose 40 pounds of ugly fat. Mm, here we go, colleges and fashion careers. and That's good, you know? Ah, these are big, the modeling schools. The modeling schools, Brooks, um, Barbizon. Oh, there are so many of them. Or fashion, you know. Wow, a lot of fashion career pushing here. Awesome, I love that. There what I didn't see any, you know, they used to call them fat farms. You know, these places you could go um, and lose weight and, you know, they feed you and they exercise you and all that. I didn't see one of those in here. That's awesome that I noticed. So, good, good, good. Yay! Beer shampoo. <laughs> Enough of that baby stuff. Now you're ready for beer shampoo. Oh, that's funny. Okay. And sure, I used this for a long, long time in the 70s. Well, what did you think? I personally love doing these walkthroughs, particularly in the mid-70s, because I just, I love that decade. I loved the 70s, being a teenager in the 70s, mid-70s. And just the things that were coming out, the vibe that was there. I loved the clothing, I loved the makeup, I loved just the vibe of the 70s. I really, really did. Um, if there was a particular decade I could go back to, or a 10-year period, I would say 1966, no, let me, I'll say 1968 through 1978. That would be my 10-year dec. that would be my decade, 68 to 78, to relive. And it was, you know, the music was great. Oh my God, the music was awesome. And um, I loved the fashion. Um, and I just, you know, I loved my friends. I had my brother, my big brother. And we just had such a fun, fun time. So that's my wandering back to 1976. I remember I was living in San Jose in 1976 and Great America had just opened. And I don't know how, but my father scored pre-opening day um, tickets. So we got to kind of go in for the, you know, before it was open to the public completely. And it was just so cool. Our first big amusement park near us. And it was called Marriott's Great America. 1976, summer of 1976. So, are any of you from the Bay Area that remember that Marriott's Great America? So, okay, that's it. I have more magazines that I got, and I will be doing some walkthroughs and flip throughs of those coming up very soon. Thank you for being on my channel and for being so fantastic. I appreciate you more than words can say. So, I'm signing off for now. 
and I'll see you in the next video.